Um, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm Trent Johnson, and uh, uh, actually, if I work through my slides here, I'm visiting tonight from Calgary, Canada. I like to be a nonconformist, so I wore my suit and tie to Google tonight for you. And um, this is my I, I have a dream slide that, that's like a big request to developer communities. I, I feel like my co-founder partner, Eric Loggerway and I have been on a crusade to kill telephone companies for about 25 years so they can stop overcharging and abusing people. And it's developers like you in the room tonight that maybe help us you know, fulfill this dream where the internet will genuinely kill the telephone companies. Um, and you'll be able to do that because WebRTC and the complementary technologies that are emerging like it will allow you to do in minutes what has traditionally taken the telecom monopolies months and years. So we're, we are entering this new golden age of communications that WebRTC has been such a fabulous catalyst for where traditional telecom will get left behind and, and we ha I have these fabulous quotes I like to share, like the current CTO of the FCC, Henning, uh, Henning says, voice is just another JavaScript application. And, and uh, Brendan Eich, uh, the father of JavaScript, uh, WebRTC is a new front in the long war for an open and unencumbered web. Uh, so early, as WebRTC was forming, and there was all this talk of openness and tools for developers. Uh, we have an incredibly talented, bright, wonderful CTO in Robin Raymond. And Robin spoke up in our internal meetings and literally said, for the love of all that's human, why is SDP in WebRTC? And Eric and I at first tried to ignore him, but he's kind of an adamant, persistent guy. We finally consented to co-publish a blog post with Robin about the concerns with SDP. And very quickly, our friends in Redmond stepped up. And there's been a lot of background talk about political motives and, and, and slowing or undermining WebRTC. And, and I have to tell you, having been very, very directly involved with as, as the company that has chaired and been the lead author in the W3C community group. The ORTC efforts have been t because it's the right way to do it and to give more power to developers. That is what has driven ORTC. And it's been fabulous to have sponsors like Google and Microsoft step up and, and support ORTC because ultimately it's going to allow us to do the interesting, powerful things beyond, God forbid, emulating telephone calls. We have that today. We don't need a lot of that. So, so we formed a community group uh, over a year ago to define object-centric APIs for real-time communications in web browsers. We titled it Object Real-Time Communications. And our biggest issue was with SDP, Session Description Protocol, predefined blob of offer answer in the proposed um, WebRTC spec. The, our concerns included things like it was too high level, it was an arcane format, it specifies how offer answer will take place. And WebRTC transactions don't necessarily need to be symmetric like that. The, 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 there will be a lot more going on. And uh, ironically, even though we were always kind of of the opinion that it was most supported by legacy telecom providers who were kind of suspect of, um, it really didn't do a very good job of solving the compatibility issues that they were going to have to address. The, the WebRTC protocol doesn't define stack signaling and, and limit us to SIP or XMPP or the older protocols. So why are we defining and limiting media signaling to SDP? And thank God we've been able to drive some momentum around this thing. And I was delighted with Peter's comments uh, and, and his complimentary remarks around 
ORTC, and we're seeing adoption of ORTC on major, you know, by the major players. And th some simple examples of what that will allow us to do, layered video coding, codec settings per track, which uh, is increasingly interesting as, as the audio codec dialogue continues. Uh, the ORTC community group is about 70 plus members today. It's actually better attended than the WebRTC working group sessions. So ORTC is now often referred to and recognized as the upcoming version. It will be adopted into WebRTC. Um, but I, I also want to make very, very clear when we stepped up to take a public position opposed to SDP in WebRTC, we wanted to be incredibly careful not to delay or undermine the WebRTC work that was taking place because that's the business we're in, that's the, the vision we support as well. And so it is a complementary, um, uh, it is a complementary technology that you can use if you want to and, and that will be subsumed into this fabulous thing that is WebRTC. Uh, I want to take a quick minute to just tell you who Hook Flash is. Robin Raymond I spoke to, who's now our CTO, and Eric Lagerway, my co-founders, are, are the guys who were inventing soft phones 15 years ago. So for those of you that have had soft phone extensions on everything from Link to Cisco devices, that's technology that was created by, by two co-founders about 15 years ago. And Robin and, and these two guys have really taken Hook Flash as an opportunity to try and fulfill a vision of what kind of, maybe what SIP was supposed to be. 10 years ago and overcome the shortcomings as we've moved to a point in the world where most of us have a computing device connected to the internet in our pocket. That's what's really changed the opportunity to, for, for what I referred to as you know a golden age of communications that's going to be driven by pe the people like you in this room. We've been lucky enough to have advisory participation from uh, Chad explained um, Global IP Sound. Uh, that company, one of the co-founders of that company is Dr. Alan Durek, who released Wire uh, within the past week. And uh, Alan's a shareholder advisor uh, of, of the Hook Flash team. Uh, Dr. Cullen Jennings, who heads up, uh, chairs both the IETF and W3C WebRTC initiatives, uh, was an advisor. Cullen had to step down when we took a public position against SDP, uh, but he remains a close friend and, and great supporter of ours. And, and uh, Evan Kerstel has been a wonderful supporter of ours out of the Boston area for the past three years. And Evan now leads business development on a consulting basis with us in the US. Our core technology is we built, when we saw WebRTC coming spring of 2011, we didn't want the people who got to build with it to suffer through the shortcomings of some old protocols. And we designed a brand new signaling protocol, purpose-built for WebRTC, that does some really interesting, works to solve some of the really interesting problems about pure communications on the web. So things like identity and federal, how will websites talk to each other? How will we find each other on the web with, without having to use any phone numbers or touch the PSTN? So these are the things that OpenPeer is building and we're open sourcing to the developer communities for you to build real-time communication solutions and applications. Um, so we build open source developer tools for RTC and we host a complete back-end platform to enable some of it. It does the complex scalable stuff that, that developers shouldn't be bothered with, and there's a free developer sandbox and API uh, that you can find uh, at Hook Flash. Um, I, I, the latest on WebRTC and the news we had at the end of October was an announcement from Skype that references the IE teams. And uh, so we see Skype and Internet Explorer both uh, announcing that development's begun on the ORTC API for WebRTC. 
And uh, as we heard from Peter tonight, uh, Google is implementing most of the ORTC API as well. So, you know, if and, and the biggest thing that we would ask and encourage you to do, come and get involved at the W3C uh, community group. Attend the meetings. We, you know, th uh, contribute. Uh, you, you can help manage the future of this entire standard and an exciting thing that is taking place. So, you know, I'd encourage you to come and have your input. Um, and closing, Chad, uh, WebRTC Meetup Boston, what a, what a fabulous meeting to get to come to, and Google for hosting. Thank you very much. Great to be here tonight. left here, but any questions for, for Trent? Always maybe I'll, I'll start by asking you one. Uh, actually, oh, oh. I, it, uh, it's going to be a hard one. <laughs> so, um, but say I'm a front, there's a lot of front end developers here and there's a lot of developers out there that already use, you know, some sort of uh, abstraction layer so they don't have to deal with all the, all the nitty gritty uh, that we talked about of SDP already. What is the benefit of ORTC for them? Um, the, uh, so, so we had a great example. We, shortly after the ORTC API was published, we had a call from a real interesting uh, startup that does uh, um, video software and hardware for citizen journalism into television control rooms. And the CEO literally said, thank you guys so much for ORTC because we couldn't leverage WebRTC to solve the, the multiple video stream into control room hardware that we were working to solve, but with WebRTC and the ability to go deeper and manage multiple video streams, we're doing, we're enabling multiple video feeds for customers like Time Warner into control rooms. So it's, it opens it up. It's more power, as we've said. All right, thanks. A a any other uh, questions? All right. Thanks, Trent.